welcome to My Computer Career's Tech Out. I am Russ Monastero, your Assistant Director of Education. I wanted to do something different, and here we are. I've put together a team of coworkers that I closely work with and love. Let's do an intro in no particular order. Corey Sadler, Senior Lead Instructor for Live Online. Betsy Wilkins, Senior Instructor Mentor. Andrea Rio, Assistant Director of Student Success. And Terrell Anthony, Executive Director of Operations for Cyber Tech High School. I would like to have a casual round robin conversation on topics for learners that are new to my computer career, new to information technology, and those that are returning to school. All right, question one, hot topics, here we go. All right, team, are you ready? Ready. ready. Student success can have several can have several definitions depending on who you ask. From your perspective, what qualifies a student to achieve, to achieve success? Now, I'm gonna start with Betsy. Betsy, what is your perspective? Well, I think to be successful, you know, they have to be willing to put the work in on their own too. It's not about just coming to class and sitting through the lecture and doing the assignments. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that, you know, they really put in the time outside of class as well and do like some research on their own on topics that maybe they don't understand and reaching right. out to us to help them. Excellent. Excellent. Drea. I think it's really important to be, to be able to know what you don't know, like Betsy said. Um, ask questions, know who mm -hmm. your support system is, reach out, ask for help, um, and always right. keep in mind of what you don't know. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Corey? I think student success, uh, you know, goes along the lines of, uh, you know, get your mindset correct as far as a successful mindset, right? And oftentimes, success is built upon failure, right? And understanding, you know, your weak points um, and building mm -hmm. upon that as well as, you know, fostering in your strengths as well. Excellent. Now, Terrell, I'm going to ask you for, uh, for uh, two perspectives, one from an adult learner and one from a high school learner. Okay. Well, as an adult learner, um, SMART goals, we've all heard of them. And, and knowing where you're going or where you want to go right. is kind of the first step in success, in my humble opinion. Because if you map it out and you achieve those milestones to get there, you're more than likely to succeed. You have to know what you want to do. And, and, and you know, the difference right. with high school is that you don't know what you want to do in high school typically, right? You know, as an adult learner, you've, you've kind of seen the movie before. You, you know what, what potholes you've stepped in and where not to go. Uh, as a high school student, everything is new to you for the first time. Right. So success is defining, trying to narrow down what you wish to do when you graduate high school. And that's exactly. done through the, the mentorship uh, with your parents and, and guidance counselors and, and uh, fellow students. Excellent. Yes. And I agree with everything. Now, from a, my perspective on this, when it comes to success, you have to have goals. A lot of people today are always looking for that instant gratification. And that comes from all the toys that are out there, the phones, the I this, the I that. I get it. But... But, you know, people are people, and people have to take the time and effort to learn, right? And you have to shift from instant gratification to now goal-driven. And once you have goals, you know, once you have that overall end goal, which could be graduation, earning certifications, whatever, you want to have those smaller goals, all those baby steps to eventually lead to that ultimate goal. So that's my definition of a student success. All right, guys, question number two. Are you ready? Exams can be overwhelming. I don't know about you, but I get very nervous when I take any type of exam, especially certification exams, okay? They are very overwhelming. Uh, they are nerve-wracking and scary. How do you, how do you coach your students to overcome any fears that, that are just basically linger above? Betsy. 
Well, I think it's important to remember why they came here. You know, certifications is the end goal. If you let your anxieties kind of rule you and you don't go in there and even try, you won't know where you, you know, you don't know where you are or what it is that you don't know. By going in there and testing, you can then, you know, look and see where your weak points were and then get with your mentor Mm -hmm. and do a review so you're more successful the next time. But to be scared and not go in and even try that's you know that's what we try to push students past yeah i agree with you on that because you really do have to try you have to try to see what it's all about drea what do you think i think uh, making sure you're really prepared um, with flashcards practice exams i i always personally like to do you know six seven even ten practice exams before the test and then I like to not mm. study the morning of. I think it's um, important to keep your mind fresh and, and not stress out. Um, go into the test feeling confident, knowing that you are going to do the best you can mm-hmm. and um, you'll try again next time if it doesn't work out this time. Perfect. Yep. I agree. Corey. Oftentimes fear is driven by the unknown, right? And uh, we, you know, here at My Computer Career, we do an extensive training program and prepare students um, from day one. And with reminding the student that, hey, you know, unknown is what drives fear. And, you know, My Computer Career offers up multiple attempts um, for certification. And so trying to uh, lessen the pressure. Right. And, and, you know, how the student understand that it's that unknown factor that truly is defining um, how they're feeling. Right. And so pushing through it, reassuring them uh, that, hey, yep. you know, if it doesn't go your way, you know, and again, oftentimes success is built upon failure. And so just having the proper mindset and understanding that they are prepared and, you know, take away that unknown factor, go in there and see what it's like. Right. Excellent. Yep. Agree totally. Terrell, from uh, both perspectives again, what do you think? You know, I, I have to agree with all the educators on, on the panel today. When you, when you practice, you do practice exams, you know where your, your shortcomings are, you know what you need to strengthen, go back and study. Uh, typically, when you repeat these practice exams over and over again, you know what you know, and you always get those right, and you know what you don't know because that's just the area that, that you still need to strengthen. So it at least gives you some direction to, to start to study for. Excellent. Agreed. Now, I often take certification exams. I love taking certification exams. But at the same time, I am always very nervous. Uh, ranging from A+, plus all the way up to CISSP, I've taken them all. And each and every time, I am so nervous. I do 100 bathroom runs. Uh, I do, uh, you know, study... Uh, uh, you know, really up until the last day, and and uh, I actually do exactly uh, what the Dre said is the day of the exam, I don't study anything. That's it. It is what it is, and if you know what you know, you don't, you don't, and you're just going to find out. But when you get into a a, a testing center, whether it's at um, um, at the one of our locations or or uh, someplace else, I try to go in there with a positive mindset. I try to be as calm as possible. And the whole thing is, is that you want to answer the questions that are being asked. Don't ever answer a question what you think it is. Read the question and answer the question as to what's in front of you. I have made that mistake several times, and it's cost me exams. But um, that is my advice to you. So, you know, panel, great, you know, uh, uh, you know, great input there. All right, next question. Are you guys ready? How are we doing over there? All right. All right. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, students that wish to join the world of IT may have or may not have a realistic view of the industry. We see a lot of this, okay? Um, IT is not, it's not one of those as seen on TV careers. There's a lot of it, you know, it's not like you see on TV where they're dragging and dropping all this cool technology and, and, you know, problems are solved within 55 minutes, right? It's not like that. How would you describe the role of an IT professional? What career path in um, uh, what career path in IT can students pursue? Those are the two questions. Betsy, go ahead. 
Uh, well, I think that they can really pursue anything. You know, there's a, so many different areas of IT and, um, you know, coming into the program, a lot of students don't know what they want to do. I think by going right. through the program and doing the different courses, they can see what mm. interests them and then start looking at jobs that focus on that area. You know, they need to have realistic goals, though, that, you know, like you said, it's not like on TV where all of a sudden you're you're hacking all the time. You know, there's mm. there's steps to get to that. And so, right. you know, set realistic goals that you may start out a little smaller than you want to. But as long as you keep learning and keep trying, you can reach the goal that you want. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Dre? Uh, one of the things I always encourage my students to do early on um, is look for internships, um, start ne networking uh, on LinkedIn and yes. see what companies are interested in, um, make some connections and see what they can do to get some experience. Um, that will help them uh, formulate what they would like to do a little bit better when they yeah. come out of school. So I think that helps. That's perfect. Corey. Well, I think that, you know, IT professionalism uh, really comes back to general mindset, right? Um, basically, we're helping people and you have to have that helper mentality, right? You have to be okay with helping people. As far as pursuing uh, career paths uh, within IT, right, it really comes back to so many different genres that really fit one's personality. I mean, if you're into design, development is great, right? You can create something from ground up, right? If you're into networking, right, into mathematics and stuff like that, right. you can pursue that field, right? If you're into system administration, right, and you are really mechanical in nature and you understand basic processes, that's a great field as well. But it doesn't negate the fact that it's a building block process, right? It's, you know, the role of an IT professional is constant education education, right? A lot of our certifications expire and they do require renewal. And we should often, you know, try to align ourselves with new technology, which then sends us into other certifications and, and stuff like that. So we're a career student, really, at the end of the day. And in whatever path you choose, um, you should often, you know, kind of evaluate, you know, uh, what yeah. your personality is. Is it, you know, development and so on and so forth. I agree. I agree. Terrell, what do you have for us? Yeah, you know, I've got to tell you that it's like phone a friend. When you are an administrator of some sort and your IT, uh, your stuff goes down, your network goes down, you're dead in the water. So when you contact that IT professional, they are the life uh, guard. They are the, the lifeline for you to get back up and running. And as long as that person has a great customer service um, right. ethic on, on their side, because knowing that the person on the, the end with the problem is so nervous and, and, and terrified that this isn't going to go up, you're that person that's going to, to ease their, their angst and correct their, um, their situation. So no matter what role that is, if, if that's a help desk, if it's, you know, tier one technician, whatever it is, do it well with customer service in mind. Excellent. Now, Terrell, I have one question for you. Mm -hmm. What if I don't have any friends? <laughs> Who can I call? IT is your friend. So <laughs> that's, that's the phone a friend, you know? Phone a friend, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. Hey, listen, that was great. You know, those are the questions that I had and all the information that, that was provided here is so very true. It is so very true. And, you know, depending upon what you want to do in, you know, in the industry it comes down to your everyday choices. Um, now I recommend that for somebody that is starting out in the industry, I think the, the, um, uh, CompTIA A plus certification is such a fantastic cert, and I'm sure you know that you guys here in the panel can also agree. Um, that certification really visits many different areas of IT, and it'll get you thinking as to, gee, you know, what do I want to do, right, guys? What do I want to do in information technology? Just like uh, you guys said, right? Uh, uh, programming, uh, network administration, systems administration, perhaps. Uh, um, IT management in the future, right? Uh, you know, cloud technology, all this stuff is all incorporated. So if 
you're not sure, definitely pursue that A-plus certification. Now, how would you describe the role of an IT professional? All the answers here, it's all correct. The, the, from my perspective, the role of an IT professional is you are there to do several things. One, you are there to support company goals and objectives, okay? IT is not a department where you are just going out and buying all this cool fancy equipment and playing all day. It's not like that. Uh, you are there to support the overall mission of the company. That's what they're there for. And also IT is there to raise awareness. You're there to educate. You are a customer service representative, uh, just like you guys said. So you are there to to raise awareness and to get everyone on board when it comes to IT security and, and aligning IT practices with, again, company goals and objectives. Hey, listen, we had a lot of fun. We reached the end of yet another informative video. If you like this video and want to see more tech out, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, leave a comment on what IT topic uh, you would like us to cover on our next episode. Let's continue our conversation at Cybersecurity Lounge. I would love to hear from you. Thank you very much, everybody. Depending on, Mark, I'll just start that over, okay? All right. Student success can have several definitions depending on, start again. <laughs> all these bloopers. <laughs> oh, this happens all the time. Students, Student success. Get, don't laugh, Terrell. Come on. <laughs> How would you describe the role of an IT? Uh, Mark. Oh, man, I had that so good, too. Yeah, you did. Now I'm angry, guys. Now I'm angry. All right. Yeah, All right. Right. Can we get IT in here? I'll be right there, Tyrell. Yeah, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> I need backup. I need backup. Yeah. Let me do my phone to Frank. Hey, let's pour it into his, uh, his computer. What, 3389? Oh, what did you, hold on a second. I clicked the wrong button. Nope, that's the wrong one. Technical difficulties.